Let's talk about the top diseases that are in reality nutritional deficiencies. Is it possible that certain diseases could really be just nutritional deficiencies? Well, that's what we're going to talk about. You know, when you go to the doctor with your disease, there's not a lot of deep dive into vitamin or mineral deficiencies at all. Uh, that's kind of off the radar. Maybe if you have anemia, they might look at iron or even B12, but typically they're not looking for nutrient deficiencies. In fact, from my experience, they don't really look at the cause for any of these conditions. It's mainly making sure that they correctly diagnose you and then jump right into the treatment. But let's take a look at a couple things. There's over 250 million preschool children worldwide that have a severe vitamin A deficiency, which makes them prone to blindness. So without enough vitamin A, you can very easily develop uh, all sorts of diseases, not just with your eyes, but with your immune system, with your skin, you can have acne, dermatitis, all sorts of things. Now let's talk about vitamin E. If you don't have enough vitamin E in your body, what suffers is the inside of the arteries. Vitamin E is one of the main antioxidants that helps prevent uh, lesions and uh, inflammation in the inside of the artery. And so a lack of E could set you up for a whole cascade of issues. We start building up calcium deposits or cholesterol deposits, and the artery becomes plugged. It all starts with a lesion that can occur because you don't have enough vitamin E to protect the inside of the arteries. Also, without enough vitamin E, the heart muscle itself can lose oxygen and you can be at risk for angina, which is chest pain. This is why vitamin E is good for anything muscular. And they call vitamin E the natural nitroglycerin because nitroglycerin is what they use to stop uh, heart attacks. All right, vitamin D. Can a lack of vitamin D cause a disease? Uh, the answer is yes osteoporosis or osteopenia, which is a pre-osteoporosis state. You can even have osteomalacia, which is softening of the bone. A lack of vitamin D can set you up for an infection. If you're low in vitamin D, you'll tend to have high blood pressure. Unfortunately, when you go to the doctor, they're probably not going to recommend vitamin D if you have high blood pressure, when it would be a good idea if they did that. Also, in the past, uh, vitamin D was used for TB, tuberculosis because it's a great remedy. They have found that patients with TB are nearly always deficient in vitamin D, which sets the person up or makes them more susceptible or vulnerable to getting TB. So it's intimately involved with the disease process. Asthma is definitely associated with a vitamin D deficiency. Depression, okay? I've known many, many people who were depressed that then increased their vitamin D that then we're now no longer depressed. All right, then we get to iron. If you don't have enough iron, your blood is not gonna be able to carry oxygen. We need iron as the key mineral to be able to carry oxygen in your hemoglobin. And without it, you're gonna get anemic. So you're gonna have a loss of uh, your air. You're, you're not gonna be able to breathe that well. You're gonna be kind of pale, tired. Then we have B12 you can develop another type of anemia from lacking B12. But there are a lot of other diseases that a lack of B12 will also create. Okay, what about zinc? If you don't have enough zinc, a lot of things will happen. Uh, you could develop dermatitis, inflammation of the skin. You could develop an infection because zinc is intimately involved with the function of your white blood cells. And this is why so many people are taking zinc and vitamin D uh, when they get an infection or when they're run down to try to speed up the recovery and overcome that infection. Also, if you're zinc deficient, you get a condition called hypogonadism, okay? So in other words, the testicle shrinks and your testosterone goes down. Also, you'll develop a loss of taste and smell, and you can even develop diarrhea. I mean, in certain countries, there's a lot of small children that die from diarrhea because they're zinc deficient. Now, if you had high blood pressure, the two really central key nutrients involved in that would be a lack of vitamin D and a lack of potassium. The problem is when you test potassium in the blood, uh, you're not gonna find a deficiency because the majority of potassium is inside the cell. So you would have to know that and also do an intracellular potassium test. 
And that would give you a lot of good information to see if you actually had a true potassium deficiency. But so many people have high blood pressure because they just don't have enough potassium in the diet. Now, the partner of potassium is magnesium, right? Another mineral that is mostly located inside the cell. That's why you have to do an intracellular test. But if you're low in magnesium, you could develop atrial fibrillation or some other type of arrhythmia. Now, there are classical nutritional deficiencies that most people know about. Scurvy with vitamin C, rickets with vitamin D, pellagra, which is a severe skin disorder with B3, and beriberi, which is a neurological disorder. Now, of course, the thought is that we don't have these major problems anymore. Maybe in certain countries that are very, very poor, but what about a subclinical deficiency? Maybe the person doesn't have a major deficiency, but let's say they have a subclinical deficiency that they might not express all of the characteristics of this, but just some. Can we actually create health without nutrients? Is it possible? And the answer is no. Well, on the flip side, if nutrients are so involved in your health, then a lack of them are gonna be involved in the disease process. This makes only logical sense. Let's take a look at two things. The foods that are recommended for a healthy body versus the foods that you really need to eat. And I'm talking about the Eat Lancet Commission. If you haven't heard about this group, you'll hear more about it. I've done a video on it. It's a group of researchers that want to do radical changes to your diet. And it's not just to one country, it's to the whole planet. They want to have a planetary health diet uh, by the year 2050. And they use all the buzzwords like it's sustainable, it's healthy. Well, it's definitely not sustainable for a healthy body. And I'm going to explain why. They want to make your diet mostly grains. 232 grams of grains every single day, like corn and wheat and all the other grains. Uh, potato, cassava, 50 grams, okay? Vegetables, 300 grams. Fruits, 200 grams. Milk, 250 grams. And this right here, meat, 14 grams, okay? That's what they want you to eat. That would basically be one mouthful of meat, okay? We're talking about beef, pork, lamb, things like that. Eggs, 13 grams. Okay, wow, we're really rationing the meat and eggs. But you can have the fake meat and the soy burgers, no problem. Okay, legumes, 75 grams. Nuts, 50 grams. And of course, we can't have a healthy diet without this right here, sugar. 31 grams. That's 7.5 teaspoons. Now, what is sustainable or healthy about adding sugar? That's what I have a question about. Now, on top of all this, what you need to know is there's something called phytic acid. That's in the grains, the nuts, and the legumes. Phytic acid is an acid in the fiber of these foods that bind certain minerals, especially zinc, iron, calcium, magnesium, potassium, okay? And then we have oxalates, okay? Oxalates are in the beans, they're in the vegetables, they're in the seeds and the grains. What do oxalates do? They bind the calcium. They make calcium unavailable. We also have tannins in these foods right here. Also binding iron and other minerals, as well as depleting vitamin B1. And of course, the sugar, you've seen this in my other videos, it's gonna deplete you of B1, zinc, potassium, magnesium, and calcium. So the foods that they want you to eat just don't match what you really need to be eating. Let's take a look at these key nutrients that are involved in disease processes, okay? All right, let's start with vitamin A. Where do you get vitamin A? Well, you might say vegetables, right? And there's tons of vitamin A. Kale has vitamin A, spinach has vitamin A. Well, it really doesn't have the active form of vitamin A, retinol. It's the retinol that prevents blindness. Unfortunately, they changed the definition of vitamin A to include beta carotene, okay, beta carotene. So when you see that vegetables have tons of vitamin A, they're really talking about beta carotene. Beta carotene has to convert to retinol. Retinol is the thing that really is needed by the retina of your eye. And so beta carotene is good for other things, but 
only 3% of it is converted to retinol, the active form of vitamin A. And take a wild guess where you might get retinol from animal products, okay? Meats, egg yolk, things like butter. Spinach and carrots might give you the precursor, but it doesn't give you the retinol, very much of it anyway. Let's take a look at what it would take to get 9,000 micrograms of vitamin A, and I'm talking about the retinol. You can have three ounces of liver, beef liver, or you can do 40 pounds of raw carrots, or 50 cups of cooked kale, or 454 cups of raw kale. So you can go ahead and pick which one you want to be able to get your vitamin A at your next meal. All right, let's talk about iron, okay? You probably hear that, oh, iron, it's in spinach, it's in vegetables. Well, that's the, a different form. That's the non-heme form, okay? There's two different forms. One is more biologically available, the other one is not. So the one that is very biologically available is the heme iron, and that is only in animal products. As far as non-heme iron, as far as absorption, you get between one and 15%, okay? The heme iron, you get 25 to 40%. And then if we look at trying to get our iron from this diet with all of these things blocking iron, I'd be surprised if you had any iron in your body at all. What about B12? Only in animal products, okay? Now, what about zinc? Do you get the same amount of zinc from plant versus animal? And the answer is no. The best bioavailable form of zinc is in red meat. It's in other animal products. It's also in seafood, shellfish, and fish. And remember, we have the anti-nutrients, phytic acid, that are going to bind that zinc with the whole grains, legumes, and even nuts. What about this DHA? That's a really important omega-3 fatty acid, right? Well, where do you get that? That's in fatty fish. Okay, it's in cod liver oil. And I will say, you can get it from algae if you want to eat algae. Okay, but it's going to be in this uh, fatty fish. Now, sometimes people will confuse um, a version of the omega-3 called ALA with the active form of omega-3 called EPA or DHA. So they might say that uh, walnuts are, are loaded with omega-3 fatty acids. Well, walnuts have the um, precursor. It's the ALA, okay? That has to turn into the EPA, which then has to turn into the DHA. So what is the conversion on that? Well, ALA to EPA is like only 8%. And EPA to DHA is only 0 to 4%. So if you're trying to build up your omega-3, and you're going to try to do it with walnuts, you're probably going to get a little bit, but you're not going to get a lot. But believe me, I eat walnuts, I love walnuts, but I'm not trying to get my omega-3 fatty acids from walnuts. And as a side note, when you sprout the walnuts, you can release and get rid of some of these anti-nutrients. So that's going to help as well. All right, what about essential amino acids or complete amino acid profiles? Can you get them from grains? Can you get them from beans? No, not directly. You'd have to combine things and know how to do it. But guess what? When you consume meat, fish, eggs, and organ meats, you get all of the essential amino acids and all of your bioavailable nutrients. So over here, you create nutritional deficiencies. And over here, you satisfy any deficiencies you have. This is way more complete and way more bioavailable to your body. Now, since we're on the topic of foods and nutrition, I think the best next video for you to watch would be relating to giving you more examples of these foods right here. Check it out. It's right here.